Pillow talk, little walls, simple moons Warm it all, take it off, five o'clock um, What come the rocks? What come the rocks? Dirty socks, kitchen sink, bring it on Drink a drink, drink it off, take it off, take it off, take it off Rhythm and blues Sipping on gin and juice So you've seen us install the clean screen in an original console. Now I'm going to show you how to do the solder install, which includes adding the button ribbon or soldering three wires, whichever you prefer, and also including it in one of our shells. So you'll need the bracket as well, ideally. Again, you can ignore the bracket, you can ignore the ribbon. You could just hand wire and tape the screen in. But obviously I like to do things where it's completely serviceable and replaceable. So we will use our ribbon and our bracket to do the install. Again, this is a 10, 15 minute install at most, even with the soldering, it's pretty much identical to the original shell. You just hold the screen in place with a bracket and we add three wires for the on-screen menu. So let's just jump straight in and chuck this in a Retro 6 pure white shell and take a look at the on-screen menu. So just like before, I just removed the circuit board from your console and all we need to do for a modification is simply install either three wires from TP2, TP9 and TP8 for the triggers and solder them to the right, left and select pads respectively or what I've made to be much easier is simply a wire free ribbon that sits over the three points nice and easy. So this allows you to install this ribbon once and then if you wanted to completely take your console apart, swap this part out, swap this part out, swap a new screen, everything's just detachable. There's no soldering required after. So we're just gonna solder this in place. So starting with TP2, just get the ribbon and you will want to pre-tin TP2. This has obviously already had some kind of mod on so it's already pre-tinned. And then simply put some solder on your iron, hold down the ribbon and blob through. We then move up to TP9. You can see this one isn't pre-tinned, so I'm just gonna nudge that out of the way. Pre-tin the pad underneath. Push down and just tack the ribbon in place. And there's TP9. And then finally, TP8 over here. Same again, just pre-tin the pad and then hold the ribbon down and tack into place. And that's literally all there is to the soldering. So it couldn't be any simpler, just three little tacks and now we have this ribbon connector ready. So next up, we'll grab a pure white shell. I'm gonna use a black lens and black buttons. And this is one of our Retro 6 shells. So let's set everything else aside for now. We'll chuck the buttons in there. So we'll chuck the D-pad, the A and the B in, get the rubbers over them, get the light pipe in. You want to grab your brackets. Now this is an ever so slightly modified bracket compared to the standard one that used to fit the IPS screens. And I originally I kept this bar in, so it can still be used for the other screens, the unbranded third party IPS screens, for example. But if you're using it for a clean screen, the final dimple here, you want to cut flush right up to there. Now, if you don't have cutters when you're ordering, you can simply ask us to pre-trim that if you like. But once the clean screen's been out a little bit longer, I'll just remove the arm in the mold so we no longer have to trim this. It's just the intermediate gap while we still support the third party screens. If you don't want to use the bracket, you place it in just like the original and just simply push the screen up to the top right like so. So the bracket sits in this little gap here and it holds up. So if you didn't want to use a bracket, you could just push it up to the top corner like that and tape down here or glue, however you want to secure it. But with the screen in place, if we just place the bracket in like this, you can then see it just holds it there. 
and it's not over tensioned so there's a slight bit of movement ever so slightly like almost nothing but there is a little bit of movement there to prevent you know pressure it's not going to move the screen the screen will always sit in the exact same spot it's just it's not going to apply sort of too much force and cause light bleed so with that in everything else is exactly the same now we connect the screen ribbon connect that down you can see this sits nicely in this area that's what the shape's for and i do recommend here just a tiny bit of capped on tape just to keep this board down and not flapping around so it's just purely to stop it flapping everywhere while you're moving it around that's optional again you can obviously leave everything loose if you like chuck the rubbers down and i think that's it we're ready to assemble so just before we do that the way i recommend installing this is turn the board over ready to go in so this way then connect the button ribbon cable into there and fold down now if you were to do hand wiring you'd obviously just send the wires directly to select left and right now that's in you can sort of fold over like this and assemble once that's in same again just secure the PCB down with your screws connect the ribbon up insert the triggers and bumpers So what you want to do with this excess here now, because you've got a screw hole here, the battery sits over here, the battery compartment, and it's not pressured, so you don't need to worry about it crushing. But I like to just fold over in like a double pinch to get this ribbon into sort of that arrangement. So it's just basically catching underneath there. I haven't done anything, I've just passed it under like that to sit nicely. Then when we put the back cover on, this will naturally squish into place and it's designed to be folded flat, so it's not a problem. If I just get the back cover, for example, cover over and squish down, you'll see that it's perfectly fine. It's not crushed, it's just simply folded as you would expect, and that will work nice. This allows you to then still unscrew and move down and have the flexibility to service this console without it being the chance of ripping and tearing ribbons. So with that in, let's just chuck the back on Put a few screws in to hold it in place and there it is all installed let's just chuck some batteries in so you can see straight away this is designed for the original shell and because we have our screen pushed over further we now need to move this screen over so to access the on-screen menu hold select and both triggers for a few seconds and you can see you get a menu if you leave this for about four seconds, it will disappear again. So that's how the menu goes off. So if we just access the menu. So if we use left and right, and say we go to brightness. See how you've got infinite control of brightness here? So you can do really, really dark. Or you can do, you know, the smallest amount of movement. There's about, I think it's uh, 300 levels of brightness technically here. It's just one smooth gradient with a pulse width modulated signal. So this is infinite control of brightness to exactly where you like it. If you don't want the pixel grid on, turn it off and it goes similar to IPS. Color modes, this is true color. This is IPS, which you can see instantly oversaturates the blues. You've got black and white and you've got a nice DMG color. So useful color modes only. So let's leave it as IPS mode for the minute. Screen align, you can see now we can move left and right. So if we just take the fingerprint magnet version of the screen, just place it in for the moment, you can see then you can move left and right to align the screen, you know, pixel perfect. And you can see the screen is perfectly covered and you have to really tilt to see any of the white, which I notice is a concern of a few of you saying you can potentially see the edge. You notice here, that's quite a, you know, get my hand under there before you can see any white. It's been designed and made so that this fits absolutely perfect and you can't see any sort of borders once you've aligned and once you've changed modes they'll all be remembered when you start up again 
So if you set your brightness level, it will be remembered. I tend to run my Game Boy around the 60 to 70% brightness. Comes with the correct color mode because you can see the colors are hugely different. So I set it to true color and I have the pixel grid on just because that's how the original did look. And then if it's too dark for the pixel grid, you can go to full brightness. So you can play this how you like, set it up how you like, and you can turn true motion on and off. So that's it for the install. That's how easy it is. But let me just show you at least a few of the modes so you can see the, you know, the color, the grid, the, the options I'm talking about. I'll do a dedicated video on this, but for now, I might as well quickly show you what they do. So color mode, here's the true color. So watch the Camelot logo. There's IPS, true, IPS, true, IPS. So you can see the drastic difference in accuracy of color. The IPS oversaturates everything. So this is IPS mode, because some of you simply like that mode, you've got used to it. And this is true color mode, how the game originally looked. So if we go into the game, so if we go into the game here, you can see there's IPS mode and there's our screen. So look at the, the roof, it's green. Now it's correctly colored. Green, correctly colored. So you see the massive difference in having these colors accurate. There's the clean screen color. There's IPS color. See how green the floor is? So this is the amount of work I've put into making sure the color reproduction is set very accurately. And if you pull up a funny plain screen, you'll find this is the exact color you'll see versus the clean screen, which is this color. I've added a black and white mode as well and a DMG mode that matches the DMG uh, nice and accurately. So you can cycle between these modes however you like, but by default, it will come set in the correct color mode, the brightness at about 60% and the pixel grid on. One other thing I'll quickly show you is the true motion. And what true motion does is, as I mentioned, correctly make the effect that the Game Boy games ran, which was to flicker um, a frame on and off so that they blend together and cause a transparency. The original screens do this, and our screen does this. So now, if we look at the map here, see how it's properly transparent? If we turn off True Motion, you can see this is what um, all the other screens would do. So Funny Plane screen, um, all the other screens on the market have this flicker. Now the camera is technically blurring that flicker quite a lot, because it's 60 frames a second and the camera's 60 frames a second. So you're not really seeing the flicker that much, but with your eye, it's very, very noticeable. It's a constant flicker. If I turn True Motion on, you can see it stabilize and go transparent. Off, on, off, on. So you can see again, the work I've put into making sure this screen looks, feels, and functions just like the original. So because I'm gonna use this one, I'm gonna turn my brightness down a little bit. I'm gonna put the pixel grid back on. And there you go, this is how I play the console. It looks just like the original. There is no discernible difference with color, visuals, effects, anything from the original, except the simple fact that this is backlit. So as I mentioned, I've put well over a year of my time into making this screen as perfect as possible. I love feedback from you guys, so any issues or any concerns you have or any install problems, definitely let me know. Um, I'll sell out of this batch fairly quickly, so I'm always making you know new revisions So if you want anything changing you want something tweaking you think something's not perfect Definitely just reach out jump on our discord uh, Discord.gg forward slash retro six can leave some feedback there talk to us about it And we can certainly add and upgrade features of the screen If you guys you know want anything adding but this is the first one for the Game Boy Advanced and I'm very excited to see what you guys think of this. And hopefully you enjoy all these little benefits that no other screens on the market currently have. And that I felt was definitely lacking for that purist originality feel. So that's it for this one. I'll do a comparison videos between funny playing, generic IPS and original. If you guys want to see that. And kind of show you side by side how accurate this screen is compared to original. Whenever you guys install this screen, I'd love to see your installs and get your feedback as mentioned. So definitely go on the Discord, post your images, and let's have a discussion about the future of this screen and other screens on other consoles. If you've liked the work I've put into this one, I do have plans to make them for other Game Boys and potentially other consoles, but I'm not sure which one to do next. So let me know what you think of this one. 
and I'll see you guys around.